Well, hello everybody, and welcome to another episode live stream of Derp Your Hubs. So today we are in a very special plane. We are in the F-15E um, Eagle in one of my favorite liveries. And so we're basically just flying from Japan to Korea from one Air Force base pretty much to the other. Would be kind of a common flight. And hey, I'm missing some stuff. So let's fix that. Because that's not right. That's not how I set it up. All right, there we go. Okay, so that fixes that. And <clears throat> we are flying West USA server and we are flying um, all players mode, which is just like live players mode. Um, I guess except better. So let's just go ahead here and go ahead and hit the skyway. So, I hope everyone's having a good day, and I'm going to check the chat in just a second. Um, I know I used to stick to a schedule, and lately, sorry everybody, I, I did give a, you know, an advance post for anyone who might be around and bored and say, you know, gee, I'd like a group flight. Well, if you're in any of the groups that I belong to, I did post it. You know, and you could always join me. Um, the flight plan, flight plane, the flight plan is in the chat. If I remember correctly, I think it's just exclamation mark flight plan. And that should give you our flight plan. And here we are, flying over beautiful Japan, super early in the morning. We don't need flaps. Let's answer them. Alrighty. And off we go into the wild blue yonder. Anybody know the song? Well, if you do, you can sing it. I'm not really, not really feeling like singing that song today. I think I remember all the lyrics. I should. So here we go. Let's not burn up all of our fuel and our climb. Eh, we're losing a little bit of airspeed, but it seems to me, yeah, it seems to me that. Well, we're losing too much airspeed, so just lower our angle here. And I know that we're... Yeah, I can hear it. I'm stalling this plane. That's what that sound is. It's the sound of the stall. So let's just continue to bank here. And let me look up what's going on in the chat. On in the chat. Ooh, let's mute that, shall we? There we go. And which will it be? Will I be paying attention to the flying or will I be paying attention to the chat? So I'm going to say, how about a little bit of both? Alrighty. A little bit of both. As our altitude drops, doo -doo 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 -doo. we're headed towards the flight plan. Going way too fast. Alright, over Mach 1. Be 
beautiful morning in Japan. And I'll be honest with you, I was kind of wanting to do a night flight because it's a full moon. Mm. If you ever do a, a night flight with a full moon, it can be, it can just be like mesmerizing. I mean, because it's just really, really nice. The way the light bounces off the skin, the way everything glows. But, you know, dawn is good too. So let's see, so it's about uh, a little after 1 p.m. or 1300 Pacific Daytime. Um, but in Japan, um, ooh, look at that. We're icing up. Did you forget to do that? I certainly did. So, it's not one in the afternoon in Japan. It's gotta be like, I don't know, six in the morning. The next day. Let's see, any ice pilot on. Um, I want it on. It is on. Cabin temperature, cabin temperature switch auto. And, you know, I mean, really, it's it's going to get, like, really cold in here. So, let's find that switch, huh? Oh, don't shut the engines off. That would be bad. Well, you know, we got the pit-out heat going for right now. Oh, look at that. My mouse is so touchy. Oh, and then there's the sun right in our face. Bouncing right off that mirror. Grrr. I wonder if we're going to have that for most of our flight. And unfortunately, I think we are. And that's kind of a bummer because that means that I may actually have to turn off the um, live time and weather because this flight's about an hour, hour and a half. Or at least I'm going to have to turn off the mirrors. It's a little under an hour and a half, and I just don't want that horrible dawn reflection from the sun behind us like that. That's, you know, I don't know. Anyways, so uh, we're getting closer and closer to our flight plan. And I think what I'm actually going to do is... Do, 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 do. Let's start setting some speeds. 400 knots. Um, nav mode's gonna be GPS. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a little bit of afterburner and nose it down just a hair. 45, you know, I'm actually happy with our, with our altitude. So our altitude value could be you know, I mean, if you want to do this, then then let's do that. 47,000 feet altitude value. Autopilot on. Altitude hold on. All right. And all the other switches we have to throw. L nav mode. So we follow our flight plan, and that should be pretty much it. Auto throttle's on, and the auto throttle should be trying to kick it up to 400 knots. So let's see. Right, so that should be it. Although I don't know why we're traveling, I don't know why the altitude hull just isn't working. Come on, computer. Stop it. Wow. Well, that's crazy. So that didn't happen to me earlier. Let's go look at all our switches. Huh? Heading home. Airspeed's on. Altitude hold is on. So what I will do is I will go ahead and set it again. I want 400 knots. Mm. Well, you know, I mean, why would the sim want to 
cooperate with me when I'm live streaming. It'll do it offline just fine. But, you know. Not at any other time. No, I said I wanted 400 knots. And... I'm gonna turn the auto throttle on. No. 400 knots. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Pony strikes again. Right, let's go look at all of our settings here. Don't need approach mode. The autopilot has to be on. Altitude hold should be on. We can turn it on. We can turn it back on. Um, heading select shouldn't matter. Right? Do it manually. Well, everybody, how about someone says today, you don't get to use your autopilot. And I'll have to say to you, yeah, I noticed that. Where's Mount Fuji? Yeah, I noticed that. I noticed I don't get to use the autopilot today. I, I don't know why. I, I mean, I figure engaging the autopilot would be a good thing. Look, if I hit the switch, you know, and uh, the flight director is selected, and our altitude value is 44 and change. Oh, and it, it bobs as I go to push the button. So, you know, I mean, I could say manual or selected. How about we leave it on selected? The throttle value is going to be at 400. Are we traveling? Well, we're traveling above 400. But, you know, it's interesting because we're not even at 44 and change. Hmm. We're just, like, spinning around. Just la-di-da. You know. Autopilot? It's autopilot. Did he turn on LNAV mode? He did. He turned on LNAV mode, because when you flip LNAV mode forward, assuming I did it the first time, you know, the aircraft is supposed to, with the autopilot on, it's, you know, supposed to fly towards our line here. Right. And it's, um, it's, uh... Oh, looks like the sim's gonna crash. So, I don't know. So, you know what? Um, I, I'm gonna say that this is... People are like, the autopilot's trying to kill me. I would say that today... The autopilot is definitely... Trying to kill us. Um, auto throttle can stay off, since it doesn't want to work. And the altitude hold can be off. And the flight director will stay on. And we'll stay on selective, you know. I guess we're, we're we're doing this old school today, which is fine. I'm okay with flying the plane, you know, without an autopilot. It makes it more fun. You know. And I suppose I'll look into what combination of software. You know, the live streaming software, the web browser, I mean, whatever it is with Microsoft Flight Sim, you know, that suddenly makes the aircraft stop functioning properly. So... Maybe it's a patch that's going to be fixed in Sim Update 10. And I don't mean to, you know, be negative. But, you know... I don't know, the autopilot was working when I did the test run. I didn't do anything differently than I did today. So... I don't know. I really don't know.
But I'm okay with it. I can follow the dotted line. And this is a great plane. And I, I will say that. I mean, this is... The F-15, the Eagle... You know, it's a beautiful aircraft. And we don't need to be going 612 knots. 400's fine. And there goes my canopy fogging up again. All icy. And I mean, I figure that, you know, the only thing that's great about the autopilot is that you can sit here and you can say, oh, hey, you know, I mean, I need to turn the heat up. I need to play with some knobs and some buttons. Cold or hot? What do you think? Uh, I would say hot. Uh, uh, auto. Manual. Well, I, I guess we can't really control the temperature inside the plane. But the Pit up heat is oh engine two ice on off well the, the switch isn't working but um well let's see so I have this turned on so it says off so it should say off when it's on on I'm guessing well we'll find out um we we will find out, and especially if we crash. But that does look like, you know, ice on the canopy. Wow. And I, I have to ask myself, am I not supposed to be doing this flight today? Are there like some kind of cosmic forces? Is the hand of God saying stop? Well, actually no, because then I just wouldn't be but, I mean, is there, like, some, like, do not fly Microsoft Flight Simulator from this location to that today? So, who wants to try the autopilot again? Wasn't that fun? You want to try the autopilot again? I, I could say we could try. Let's see. So, let's push a bunch of buttons, right? Okay. Oh, look at that! Okay, so there was no route. How about when we... None. Not in database. Right. Cost index is 100 from to I mean there's there's definitely a flight plan in here I click menu autopilot position monitor autopilot so I'm gonna click autopilot and on right it's going somewhere is it gonna fly the flight plan or is it just gonna do whatever it wants and then we hit L nav mode for locational navigation and it noses down. Because you're like, well, what's your altitude value? Zero! You can't be flying at zero. How about 35,000 for altitude value? <laughs> okay. So. That works. Looks like we're going to climb. And by the way, I also learned... Oh, see, now the autopilot light's on. Isn't that awesome? I also learned that um, this is actually your airspeed. This is your barometric pressure. Um, so if the heads-up display and the... Whatever this is called, the airspeed's correct here. Just like um, if you read it on the gauge, it should be correct. Right? 35... What's our airspeed? 341, let's take a look at we're we traveling at 341 knots, 300 and yeah, close enough so who wants to go 400 knots? Ooh, I do I want to go 400 knots, not 4,000 knots, come on, are you kidding me? that's, we flying the, the dork star dark star okay, 400 knots sounds good, throttle value of 400 knots um, altitude values there. It says that the AP throttle, which is the auto throttle, is going to take us to 400 knots. And now, 
I sound like Beavis. No copyright claims on that. I just said I sound like him. Not... You know. Right? Right, don't come suing me. I don't have any money for you. I, I literally don't. So... Um, it's just going to be a waste of your time and money to come after me. Okay, so... Let's see. I love this plane. And I love this plane also because it's the two-seater version, right? It's one of the two-seater versions. And we got the... the oh, Dean Crawford is the pilot in the back. And yeah, I, there's something up with my mouse or it's up with the view in this thing. But I mean, I kind of like it because, yeah, we could be all, Hey, look, everybody. We're in the back seat. And... That's look. That's what you look like. Well, that's what the co-pilot looks like. It's got a bar to hold on. Right? It's important to have a bar to hold on to, especially when you're getting in and out of the plane. And then you know we can go back to the pilot. You know, there's the pilot. But ooh, hey, that's a good question. Does the co-pilot have mirrors? And the answer would be no. But he's got a full set of controls. So, uh, I don't remember. I, I think when I read... I think I read that... Um, that the co-pilot could take control of the plane. Much like an F-14. So you see that? They got rid of the F-14, but they were already two-seater F-15s. And they kept the F-15. And they both came out roughly around the same time. You know... Uh, you guys already know this. You don't need me to tell you what you already know. So we're just gonna tool along here and... Four hundred knots as long as we can. And let's see, does it really say we're going Mach 1.11? Well, I don't know if we want to be doing 400 knots the whole way then. say so 400 knots is not a good thing um 380 I'm gonna hear the 10 knots slower and I hear the afterburners kick off oh don't kick back on now uh crap so, you know, I, I think I've discussed this before. And it's just for people who maybe, maybe, and I know there's people out there that don't understand how afterburners work. Um, but they basically dump fuel in the burner canister. You know, they, the after burn, it's kind of self-explanatory to make the plane go faster quicker um so the plane burns more fuel at a much more rapid rate and extended periods of time on afterburner or full afterburner are not really what you want to be doing and you'd say but why? And I could say, okay, so shouldn't you be doing like loops and rolls and stuff in the F-15? I mean, come on, this is boring. I mean, you're traveling in a straight line. You know, there's all these clouds. You can't see anything. Well, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Because um, flying's not for everybody. So, you know, and so I can explain to you what I do know, and it's, you know, not a whole lot, but it, it's enough, I guess. So, right, so we have, like, um, 
we have our fuel settings right here, right? And, you know, right now you can see that internally we have 18,007, it's going down, internal, what, pounds of fuel? Right. And it's just burning away. And then we have a total of 35, 43, right? 35, 543 total. So that means that we have some more fuel somewhere else. And you say, but I don't understand. And I'd say, well, look, so right now we're burning through our external fuel tanks. And this is maybe one of the reasons why I chose to put external fuel tanks on the plane. You know, when you see here, the two... Come on, Sim, don't crash on me. I'm counting on you to make the whole flight today. We were programmed by a staff of competent individuals that make a sim that doesn't crash. So we have these two drop tanks, right? Left, right, and I could have put a third one on. And the F-15 also has these conformal fuel tanks. This version does. So this thing actually holds a lot of fuel, right? So I'd say, well, isn't that a much nicer view? Well, we'll get back to that view. Trust me, I like the external view, too. And I would almost have to wonder, you know, do actual, like, military pilots be like, dude, if I could just stare at the outside of the plane, it's a kind of a sexy plane, right? But anyhow, back to the fuel. So if I go to the games setting, I said game, sorry. Well, you know, game, sim. So you can see here, right, how much fuel do you have? Well, it breaks it down. So there's a tank, which is probably like a fuselage tank, right? That holds, you know, uh, 600 something pounds of fuel. And then there's a wing tank, and there's other tanks, right? And so I have these set to 63. So it's kind of sipping off this first tank. Now, preferably, I would want it to burn these two first. And that's why they're called drop tanks, right? Because you can, well, they're extra fuel tanks. So, would you want to be burning the fuel in the plane first, or would you want to be burning it in the tanks first? And so I would say, that's how I want to do it. Wing tanks, external norm transfer, wings tanks, no, we don't want to refuel. And you're going to have to excuse me, but it's been a while since I've actually flown this plane. So hopefully I flipped the right combination of switches because I'm not dropping my drop tanks today. So it really doesn't matter to me, right? And so we were looking at this display, right? And the display, well, let's just be honest with you. The display is like a mystery to me, you know. For those of you who love to do math, and pilots have to love to do math, you can say, okay, well, this is how much fuel I have, and this is how much it takes to get there, and all this was supposed to be calculated, but I'll tell you what, it was a sim, so I just kind of, you know, I took my, I took my Corvette to the gas station and just put gas in it, man, because, you know, I'm, I'm going to just, you know, whatever. So I put more than enough gas in it so I could play with the afterburners, because... I mean, really, right? I mean, isn't flying all about calculations? You can't land when you're too heavy. You shouldn't, you know? Right. I mean, there's all these rules about plane and weights and physics and, you know. But so I'll kind of get into, like, the, you know, I'll get into the derp version of, of planes, of fighter planes. So, where do I start? I could start with, I could start with, this isn't DCS flight sim. We could start there. We could start there with some of, some of the comments that I've noticed on like Facebook, uh, other groups of this isn't DCS. This is go play with your fighter jets in DCS. And I'm going to say, that's really not a friendly community of people. 
in the flight sim world. I thought we were all supposed to be like, I heard it was really friendly for this sim. And when people are like, I, you know, I'm busy flying my jumbo jets and my Cessnas and stuff and my Beechcraft and I don't want you and your, your, your toys, in, you know, your weapons of war, you know, flying around in my sim. And it's like, well, it's not your sim. So I'm just going to go there. And, you know, I mean, I will counter that with, you know, I'm not really a big fan of jumbo jets. I love them. They have a purpose. Um, I've flown on a bunch of them. And, you know, it's kind of boring when you're flying on a jumbo jet. And you're just, you're going in one direction. And it takes a really long time to land. And maybe that's also because I'm not terribly great with them. But, you know, I do enjoy some of them, and I enjoy flying them, and I bought the Phoenix. But anyhow, let's get kind of back to that. So, um, so in general aviation, you really don't have drop tanks, right? Because that was more or less, I mean, I, I'm done with the whole attacking, you know, people. Um, so you don't have drop tanks in, in a general aviation plane. You have tanks that are bolted to the plane, and you can't, you know, eject them. And so, I mean, you'd say, but I don't, well, because fighter jets are, I'm not going to disagree with how some people have said that, you know, they're weapons of war. Oh, they are. They, they're, you know, I mean, it's not like you, you know, go get an airline ticket and you fly an F-15 from, I don't know, like Japan to Korea just to go visit your aunt on a vacation. Not yet, at least. And, you know, so you'd say, well, why have drop tanks? Well, because, you know, um, yeah, there's like physics and all that stuff. And, you know, the plane doesn't perform well with the tanks fuel of, full of fuel and the plane overloaded and bogged down. It, it can't it can't maneuver as well. And so, you know, you would, you know jettison the drop tanks if you wanted some better maneuverability and you know we could get into all the well what does that mean because jet fuel is jet fuel's horrible you know i mean you don't want drop tanks falling on your crop field of crops you know, i mean not to mention you know i mean th it's going to cost money i mean it's going to be taken out of a military budget to replace them and uh, you know really i mean couldn't you figure out a better way? Well, this is how we figured it out, you know, being the, the humans that we are, you know, we've, this is the best we can do. And so, you know, you have these drop tanks, right? And, you know, that's their purpose is you can carry all the fuel you need to get from A to B and some extra. And, you know, it's an advantage. And then if you don't need them, you can drop them, right? And again, I guess I could say, you know, people be like, well, it's like well, aviation fuel in itself, you know, jet fuel and just have gas is, you know, you're not going to be happy if you research it. So really, you know, eh, maybe eco-friendly and aircraft doesn't really go together, even though they are working on green planes and there's all kinds of things that they are doing but you know planes are definitely high polluters so maybe aviation wouldn't sit well with you at least current aviation if you were you know just a very hardcore environmentalist but then you know I mean if you really want to stick to your morals and don't ever hop on an airplane you know, don't drive a car. But, you know, let's not go in that direction. You know, that's very extreme. But so, anyhow, drop tanks. Yes, that's what they're there for. And so you'd want to use them up first because you could drop the empty drop tanks, right, if you don't need them. But again, you know, I think you'd want to keep them all the way to their destination. So that would be, in a pony train of thought, drop tanks and their use you want to go through them first just in case you don't want them because in that way you would just drop the empty ones right in case you did have to drop them because also i guess aerodynamically too even empty they you know kind of affect the performance of the plane so you know yeah you know, they were designed to be you know jettisonable just like i mean you don't even want to know how much a missile costs just you'd be like really <laughs> really now so Again, 
I would hope that we would be sipping from the drop tanks first, and I'm going to say, you know, but shouldn't you know you're playing, and I'm going to say, I should, and look, it's still chewing through the first tank. So, I kind of said this in one video, and that would be, read the manual, right? We don't want fuel dump off. So that's the dump. We don't want... Yeah, we don't want to dump fuel. External tanks transfer. Norm transfer. Confirmal. So, hopefully, that was the right combination of switches to get the plane to stop drinking off the center tank and start drinking off of the conformal fuel tanks, which are empty. So I already drank from those. To drink from my fuel tanks here first. Because that's what I want. I want to empty those first. And we'll see as we go along. And then someone could say, but if you only knew how to read this display, you would know. Well, I would have to say. Besides the sun in my face. Let's go over this with half a brain. Right? Because... Obviously, that's what I have. I would have to say that LCFT is left conformal fuel tank. And um, that would be right conformal fuel tank, which are the two big poofy marks on the end. And we have them full, and those are empty now. And again, internal would be... It looks like it's still sipping off the internal. Ooh... We don't want that, right? We have left external and right external, and it's not drinking from those two. It's sipping off the left wing. I don't want that. I don't want my landing lights on either. And so you'd say, but how? So... We don't need the conformal fuel tanks, right? Center external tank stop stop transfer, so right. Now I don't know which way is on and which way is off. Because they never labeled the switches like that. So up is gonna be wing, so I'd say I don't want it on wing. I want it back on external and the same thing. Well, stop fuel. See, this should actually... So, maybe. Maybe, and if I look at my display here... Look, there we go. Left external, right external. So now it's drinking off of those. And that's actually how I want it. So I will make a note for the future that that is how we want to be flying. We want to use up all the stuff in the conformal fuel tanks. Oh, look! And there's an island right there off of the coast of Japan. I think that's like a disputed island. I, I don't know. Because, you know, we have, if you look, we were in Japan, and then there's going to be Korea, and then Korea and North Korea and China are all on the same landmass um, continent, and Japan is a separate island. Um, off the coast and there's a bunch of different islands in between and you know when you read the news you just it's like you know I guess it's like anywhere else where it's just you know all these all these disputed you know this is my island and I conquered it first and my ancient ancestors came over on boats and it's just like anywhere else you know people we can't share the earth we're all just like that's my damn line on a map don't you dare cross it. My rock is on that side. Speaking of which, hey, um, oh, that's right. They taught that in a children's cartoon to children. My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. There was an episode. It's amazing what we teach our kids. Trying to be like, hey, don't screw up like we did. Yeah. But anyhow, back to our flight. Yeah, I mean, because how long is this video going to stay on Twitch for? Uh, I would say, I don't know, a month tops. Well, so you guys can enjoy it for a month and be like, dude, this guy. Yeah. 
But, you know, it's usually different when I got people who want to come fly with me and I don't just sit here and ramble on about, you know, points that, I don't know, don't really seem to matter, might offend some people, might not. Yeah. So, and of course, the plane that, you know, I don't think that any Air Force is ever going to decorate a plane like this. You know. But, you know, hey, I thought it was great. So, you know, I figured I'd do it. And, uh... So there we go. We're going to give ourselves the external view because now we figured out how to transfer fuel. And I mean, honestly, I really don't know what I did wrong with the autopilot the first time. I was pretty sure it was working and I did it the same exact way I did it right now. You know, and I guess I could also say that maybe this is from... I do tend to fly a bunch of different planes. And so how can you really sit there and master one if, say, you were flying the F-22 and then the F-16 and then the F-14? Because all the systems are different. I mean, military pilots don't really do that. Not many, I would imagine. I would imagine they're usually, you know, once they're rated on a plane and they're assigned to a certain type of airframe that they fly that for a while until maybe they switch gears and qualify on something else and then fly that and then learn that one and then transfer their knowledge of what they learned about one plane to the next yeah I just that's what I would think you know and then they have knowledge of but again you know in this flight sim and so that's actually what I wanted to kind of go full circle back around to on a lighter note that's one of the great things about this sim is you can fly a jumbo jet like the A320 maybe a 737 you can fly Cessna 172 Cessna Skymaster right um, Beechcraft Bonanza uh, Beechcraft King Air um, you could fly planes that don't really exist you could fly a piece of pizza oh there's a yeah there's a piece of pizza you can fly if you can find it I think it's on flightsim.to. You know, or you could fly the F-15, the F-22. You could fly a MiG. I mean, you could... It's so diverse that, you know, you can fly all these different planes. And you don't have to just stick to... It's not the 747 flight simulator. So, I mean, that makes it kind of fun that you can do all this stuff. And I think it's also, you know, great that, you know we don't have the ability to just randomly shoot down other players in the sim like say I couldn't be in this plane and then suddenly just say hey you know what I'm going to be a troll and I'm going to go shoot down a uh, you know a, a jumbo jet uh, because we have that live player mode because I mean that would be like really like upsetting to be like dude I've been flying you know this route for, I don't know, like let's say it's like a four-hour flight and, you know, you've been flying it for, I don't know, like, you know, 38, 40, so let's call it 70%, you know, and you're live streaming and then, you know, just some dude in a F-15 comes along and shoots you down, you know, in the middle of your live stream and, you know, that would be really annoying. Just like in real life, that would never happen, you know, because it would create all kinds of problems because, you know, can't just take out a random plane for no reason um which is probably also why there are certain people that are in fighter jets and there's like anyhow i don't know you know i mean it's just more of my weird ramblings but you know again how and why things are structured the way they are and I just don't want to hear the over kind of bearing sound of the engines as we fly in external. That looks kind of nice. I like the way that looks. Very artistic shot there, right? Well, just this guy, he just complains. Ah, someone's got to. You know, 
someone's got to bring some of this stuff to light because I'm going to say that I really enjoy you know the flight sim community I really enjoy the other live streamers here on Twitch and you know on YouTube on some of the other platforms I, I, I really do enjoy flying with you guys and I feel we all get along pretty well you know I, I was just kind of saying that you know and I know it's not just this sim it's just some people are like dude you know just it's like dude chill you know chill chill you know go watch a YouTube tutorial on how to turn live players off or do something else so that if you do got people that are you know trolling you and something else and messing up your flight and it's irritating you can just you know ignore them you know no need to no need to go on a uh, social media platform or a blog and just slam people because, you know, you know, especially with this sim, they gave us all kinds of options so that, you know, if you don't want it and people are bugging you, just turn them off. No, I think they thought ahead on that one. So... What ocean would this be? Ah, you could always put it in the comments or, you know, if you're sitting there in the chat, you could always put it in the chat of, what ocean is it that's between Japan and Korea? Well, interesting region of the world. I mean, I would have to say it's the Pacific. But, yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe in between Japan and and the rest of the Asian coast, it changes names. Again, you know, lines on a map and, and the way we've labeled, you know, our planet to make sense for us. But let's see. I would say we're almost about halfway through the flight. And there's a lot of water between Japan and Korea. And we're going to be landing in a friendlier part of Korea. Well, friendly, or if you're not, you know, living in North Korea. Um, because, you know, in <laughs> this day and age, I don't think that, you know, an F-15 is going to fly into North Korea and land without, you know, stirring up a, a wasp's nest. Kind of interesting, you know, that, you know, ever since the 50s, ever since the Korean War, um, never really ended, but ever since it was paused, I forget what the term of it is, um, that we have North and South Korea, it's really kind of a wacky war. Um, the, you know, the tensions between the two countries have been around for quite a while. It, it used to be one country, right? I think. Anyhow, and now, you know, there's just this tension between North Korea and South Korea. Yeah. And, you know, they've pretty much maintained a way to coexist with each other. Um, North Korea being a democracy and... Oh, did I just say that? North Korea being a, a communist dictatorship and South Korea being a uh, democracy. There we go. Let's fix that, huh? Um, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting how the two exist. Um, not really much that's ever really talked about it. You know, well, I mean, it's... Well, oh, I take that back, too. But you know that so far, it's just... You know, this mess from the 50s that never really got resolved, but it stopped really interesting if you look it up. I forget what is it, the 49th parallel, 57th, I don't know. It's the something parallel. How could you remember it all? And it's really interesting. And the other interesting thing is, is you know, that um, North Korea doesn't let anyone fly over their airspace. Like, for, especially from South Korea. Um, it just 
like the craziness of of all of it you know just but it is it's interesting that you can't cross into north korean airspace even if you're a passenger jet and it's vice versa you know it's like the crazy flight routes i've i've heard about it and i'm sure some of you guys already know So we've got land in front of us. You can see it off in the distance. But just some of the craziness, you know? I mean, could you imagine hopping on, speaking of jumbo jets, could you imagine like hopping on a plane and it's like, well, it would be easier to just fly over North Korea, but we can't do that. So we have to go like all the way around. And I think if I remember correctly, it's like if you were to take a flight, and I think there are some flights from North Korea, South Korea to North Korea, it's like you have to go all the way around. I mean, waste of fuel, you know, to get into the country. It's just, I, you know, craziness. But, you know, I know there's reasons behind it, but it's just, it, it kind of reminds me of, I don't know if anyone's ever had like siblings. Like if you were an only child, I guess this really doesn't apply to you. But it's like if you ever had to, and it's, it, that this has been in like TV shows and stuff too. It's like you got like two people, like you know, brothers. They're sharing a room, and this is my side of the room, and that's my side of the room. And don't you dare cross this line, or I'm gonna. You know, and it's amazing how that like transfers over to full-grown adults. That you know, and this guy and his hippie philosophy. What's with him flying a fighter jet? must be a liberal no I am what I am but yeah I don't really claim a title yeah label me as you will because then I'll label you back as I like um but you know just like really I mean dude at this point in the in the game of humanity and what we seem to understand about where we are bunch of people on a big ball right if you're not a flat earther um it's just boggles the mind but you know I mean again everybody's entitled to their opinion including me you can always if you haven't already start your own YouTube channel, Twitch channel, live stream, whatever, and voice your opinion on how you feel. Yeah, this is also amazing. So we're here in between the this triangle and this geometric shape here as we fly between them. And I don't really see them anywhere. I mean, you figure that I would see a big blue line. You know, that that would be to my left. I don't see it. I'm looking, I don't see it. Uh, and I definitely don't see the other weird triangle pyramid. I don't even know. I mean, yeah, I should have paid more attention in geometry a long time ago. I don't know. What, what, what is that shape called? It's not a rhombus. It's a that a parallelogram? Ah, I don't know. But anyhow, we're here, and so, you know, we can see that, you know, South Korea is quickly approaching. And our fuel's looking good. We're sipping up all the fuel out of the tanks we wanted. And you'd say, but... And I think I covered this one, too, before, because, I mean, I know. I know I'm an idiot. I, I know I am. I've embraced my derpiness. So, here's our destination. Right? And all this math here is important, too, as I have discovered. Because you want to know, you know, what runway you're landing on, and, you know, how high the runway is. So we have our little map here. 
And please excuse the noise in the background. You know, I'm, you know, not wealthy enough to afford my own recording studio. So, sometimes there's noise in the background. But I'd start a GoFundMe page, you know, or some kind of like event, but like help Pony survive and get his own recording studio. I might do that someday. Mm. If you guys thought that I'm, I'm worth it. If you're like, hey, you know what? I really like this guy's channel. I really like this guy. Or you don't. Whatever. Yeah. You know, everything helps to fund this fun entertaining educational channel right so there's the plane there's the ground back to the boring map all right I'm guessing that that's lunch in the background not for me but it is lunch sounds like it someone's lunch so here's the runway there's the control tower so we know I would say we're going to be landing on runway 27, most likely. We'll see what the computer tells us, what runway they pick for us, and if they'll let us pick another runway. And again, it's a sim, so I mean, really, I could land wherever I want, however I want. Right? But let's kind of play by the rules today. So there's our map. There's our elevation. That in front of us is South Korea. And in case we forgot, this would be an airplane called an F-15. Awesome, right? And in all honesty, how can you get more awesome than Rainbow Dash? All right, so let's leave you with that for a second. And speaking of kitchens, I think I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee while this is on autopilot, you know, about halfway through the flight, you know, and come right back. So if anyone's sitting there and you're like, hey, uh, where is he? I'm, I'm right here on my way to Osan Air Base, right south of the coast of South Korea, and I didn't turn on the tracking app. Um, that would let you see me. But, you know, that's where I am, and I will be right back, and I'll give you the outside awesome view of the Rainbow Dash F-15 while I go get a cup of coffee.
Alrighty. So, South Korea beneath us. Coffee in the mug. What could be better? Let's take a look at where we are. Okay. So according to this, at a range of 80 miles, um, Osan Air Base is going to be this spot. It's that big boring map that I showed you. And, well, I don't know, so, if it's going to say range 80 miles, is it 80 miles from the aircraft to the tip of the display? Or is it 80 miles, the span of the display, right? Or is it like when you're shopping for a flat screen TV and it's diagonally? Because that's a longer distance, even on a square, you know, than it is that, yeah, I would guess, geometry. But I don't know. And so what's our altitude? So, again, I'm not the world's best pilot. And... Yeah, you know, I have a tendency not to make some of my landings because I don't really like calculate rate of descent and I don't do the important stuff that I probably should do that real pilots would be like, dude, this guy, yeah, yeah, like I said, if I can fly a plane in a sim, mind you, you can fly a plane in a sim because it, what's going to happen, right? I mean, I'm going to bounce off the virtual ground, I'm going to virtually die. But, you know, it's fun. So, again, someday I guess I'll get more serious about it and I'll calculate all my fuel and you know, and then maybe everything will be a little bit better, but I'm enjoying myself. So, hey, I'm going to say if you enjoy Sims and just have fun with it, man. And I suppose I could go back to DCS World. Oh, crap, I can't. Not right now. But that would be fun. Because then I could, you know... Anyways. Not like, like real fighter pilots that, you know... Might not survive a combat mission. Because their job's not a game. Anyways, what do I know? So... I'm really enjoying the scenery here. And my coffee. Probably shouldn't drink so much coffee. But... It's a legal stimulant. Hmm. Awesome. So I'm at 37,000 feet, and let's look at that boring map again, right? All part of flying. It's not quite like a video game. I should do that. You know what? I might actually do that as one of my next live streams. Um, that's a good idea. Um, but so, elevations, 40 feet and 31 feet. So we're 27, so it's 40 feet above sea level. And our altitude is... Well, I'd want to say it's at 35,000 feet, but I know it's not. I know that's not correct, so it's at 34.7. Because it says on this display what my altitude is, and it says it right here, too. 34.7, because this is the barometric pressure, and this is your actual altitude and I actually did learn that because I noticed I said the numbers don't match and then I learned it was actually explained to me and I'm thankful for that 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 is barometric pressure so that's why the numbers don't match and again if I was a bit smarter and you know I read the manual and I did other stuff then maybe I could figure out how to set that to the actual altitude. I'm sure there's a way. I'm just too lazy to do it. Hmm. Awesome. 
And hey everybody, I wanted to kind of apologize because I know that I haven't been live streaming as much and, you know, for all my YouTube followers too. I'm sorry I haven't been posting as many videos as I normally do. Um, sorry, just been kind of busy lately. Um, it's not that I wouldn't mind being like, I don't know, YouTuber famous streamer that would be nice I'm not against it at all and to tell you the truth I actually respect people who do that for a living but you know this for me is just for fun because it doesn't pay my bills and I invest my own money you know just to share my personal fun time with you and always invite you along for a flight I've so enjoyed my group flights in the past and, and although people have said when you talk it's dripping with sarcasm I honestly mean that I mean I have enjoyed the group flights that I've hosted for the people that have joined it's been a blast just like I enjoy flying the group flights with other people so uh, yeah you know sometimes I'm sarcastic sometimes I'm not but really really I always enjoy having you guys come along if I have a flight that's interesting to you and you're like, hey, that sounds kind of fun. You know, that's why, I, you know, this one was posted, you know, an hour in advance, hour and a half. So I, I really can't, you know, I really can't say, but I mean, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes I just have had some issues with, ooh, with my mouse. I've really had some issues with, um, committing to a scheduled time frame. Alright, so I'm pretty close to Osan. That's where I want to land, and I don't want to fly over Osan. I don't want to fly into North Korean airspace, so Osan Airbase, turn to their tower, tune to it, not turn to it. Full stop landing. Ooh, I'm right over it. So, That's five miles in the 80 mile range. What did I tell you? I told you it was going to be 27, right? So that's 27, 27, right? So we're going to have to circle back around. Cool, 27. Right. And I'm going to say to myself, wait a minute, 27 right? Well, well, well. 20, 27, right? 27... That's a taxiway. And that's the runway. 27, right? I've got a surprise for you. I've got a little surprise for you. As we're already over Osan Air Base, right? Because it was five miles. And I guarantee you, if we were five miles out. You know, oh, there it is. Right there. So, RKSO. That's, that's what I, I guess what Osan would be. Right. There it is. So, we're past it. But I've got a surprise for you because we're going to have to come back around to 27 right. So, let's do this, shall we? Let's, nah, nope, turn our autopilot off, turn the altitude hold off, turn our auto throttle off, um, uh, uh, right, okay, and I look down here and all my switches are awesome, they're all off, everything is awesome, huh, you know, 67, Pounds of fuel. Um, what do I want to do here? No, I want my ramps on auto. Um,
I'm going to put them on normal. What is that looking like now? Okay, so now it's sucking off the internal tank. Awesome. Sipping fuel off the internal tank. So, what are all the fun things that I've learned on my on my uh, quest of derping hooves? I've learned that the one thing you can't do in a plane is you can't do this. And you say, well, I don't understand why. Well, I mean, it's kind of obvious. I mean, there goes my airspeed, so it's just increasing, and I'm going to hit my G limit. So what do I do? So, oh, that's awesome. I hit the spoiler. And it starts slowing me down. So I can dive rapidly at 6.8 Gs, and it's amazing that I haven't read it out. Right, and we did say that we're landing at runway 27. So I'm going to use my handy dandy um, map on the bottom to find Osan at a range of 10 nautical miles. So let's zoom out until we find our flight plan. There was our flight plan, and I'm not worried about crashing into the ground. Um, so Osan is in front of us, and so we're not going to be on runway, we're not going to be facing runway 27 when we come in. And you'd say, well, how do you know? And I'd say, well, because that's 27, we're going to be facing 6. And again, how would you know? Well, I mean, because I have this really cool... Well, it tells me right there. That's 27, and that's... 12 and east is 90 so uh, hey let's look at what we're doing so we want to make sure that we're not going the wrong way so actually now I'm going at 180 knots because I left my speed brake out as I was talking because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing and I'm coming in and I'm coming in and we could say that's my target right because Technically, that's my target in the sim because that's where I want to land at 7,000 feet. Now, I haven't mastered IFR. I'm more of a VFR kind of guy. So I'm going to come in here with my VFR, my visual flight reference. And we're going to see Osan. We're going to kind of pass right over it. And hopefully we'll be able to see it through the clouds. And since I dropped my speed brake, I noticed I didn't call it an air brake. Since I dropped my speed brake, or my spoiler, and, you know, jets have them too. I don't think Cessnas have them. Um, you know... My airspeed has leveled out and, or stabilized, kind of. Yeah, good enough. Because I'm actually almost going 300 knots, and in all reality, in airplane talk, that's kind of fast. Especially for GA aircraft. I mean, you know, almost 300 knots is, well, it's faster than your average GA plane. And again, I don't want anyone to think that I don't like GA planes. Because I do. I love the Skymaster. I think it's a great plane. I love that. I love the, um... I love some of the Beechcraft planes. Yeah, you know, I do have fun with the, with the A320. It's a real popular plane, and I can see why. Now, so I would say... Oh, no, that's the number 10. I would say that we're getting really close to our destination, which is right there. And, okay, so I cheated a little bit, right? I've flown this before. Well, I've landed at Osan before, so I kind of remember some of the layout, and hopefully that helps in helping me visually find the airfield. Because I'm, I'm doing like 300 knots. I'm going to whiz right by this thing. It's foggy. 
I know that I'm facing the wrong way, right? I mean, if that's 080, what do we say? The 060 is the opposite direction of what we wanted. What, what did he say? He's 27. 27 right. So, right. So that's like behind us. Because it's a big compassy circle. And so, if I'm looking at my map, where is Osan? Right? Where is this place? Dude, I've been flying all day. Okay. Look. Ow. I've been flying this plane all day. Across the ocean and you know, trying to find a place to land. And then there's all these clouds. And I'm like, seriously? How am I supposed to find this place? Couldn't you do something about that? Couldn't you put a big sign up that said Osan Air Base so I could see it from the sky? Because it's a real inconvenience. All right. There it is, everybody. Yay! So what was the surprise? Well, have a look. 27 right. Well, what do you mean? I mean? There's a taxiway. There's a taxiway, and there's 27. They said left, and then there's... What is that? Well, it looks like at one point there was two runways. So, we said 27, right? So, how would we get to 27 if we're at 19? Right, wouldn't we want... Well, I mean, I just did a VFR circle, and I saw that 27 is the opposite way. And I'm going to stall the plane because of what I'm doing, right? Because I'm doing this really goofy VFR kind of landing. <gasps> awesome! So let's see. That is 27 right. And how do I know that it's 27 right? Well, because it says so. And because when the needle's pointed there at, well, we would say 27, right? Let's center our view. That that would be 27. So we wanted to go the opposite direction of 27 because remember it's a big circle everybody right so we want to go the opposite of 27 we have a 360 degree circle ah my math is terrible let's just cheat I like I like that I like just looking at a map and said so the opposite of 27 is 6 on a 360 degree circle so the opposite of 270 degrees is 60 degrees, right? So we're, we're going to make a short turn at 300 knots. And now we're going to travel at, at 60 degrees, right? And I'll prove it to you. Because you could say, Pony, you are a liar, Pony. Well... That would be runway six left. And I'm guessing that if I was perfectly straight, that this would read 60. But it doesn't. Because we wanted 27 right. So that was six left or 27 right. One might ask themselves, well, well, which is it? Well, let's look again behind us. I'm still not technically close enough to be turning around at the last minute. Let's give it a little bit of gas, right? 
I mean, because we filled this thing up to a ridiculous amount of gas, right, to get the job done. And we'll do something that I wouldn't recommend if you were flying in GA, which would be, we could just do this, right? And, you know, it's a fighter jet. How can you not? Right. And then we're gonna be landing at 27. Now, thankfully, I'm not so dumb or derpish. And I'm going to tell you, we are going to make derby a word that people are happy to use. So I'm coming in, and I'm coming in way too fast, and I did that loop, and how am I going to do this? And shouldn't I have my landing lights on and... Yeah, I guess we could do that. Landing lights are important. Landing lights! Okay, nose up. Gas, so, because we're going into a stall. And we said 47 feet, right, roughly 50, give or take a foot or so. And there we are, it's 280. So 27 would be... 27 would be dead center. And I guess I'm not a liar. Because, look, we're 27. And it might be a bounce. And a little bit of speed brake. A little bit of sim stutter. On a very nice video card that shouldn't be stuttering. And look at that, everybody. We're here! We're here! Rainbow Dash would say awesome! Yeah. She would. And this time it's a dude telling me to exit the runway, so I like it when it switches it up too. Right, here we are. Rainbow Dash would say awesome! Right, that's not really a great Rainbow Dash voice, is it? But, you know, I guess I lack the octave or the tone to do such a voice. Um, but there we are. So we made it from, you know, one Air Force base to the other, from Japan to South Korea in an F-15 without crashing and dying. That's pretty cool. Uh, so that was fun. And we learned today that when there's only one runway and they call it right and left, right? Why would they do that? And I mean, because why would you? Need... Yes, sir. I heard you the first time. Okay. Oh, nose wheel steering. That's right. Yes, sir. So we're going to cross this other runway. Is it a runway? Is it a taxiway? Was it a runway? I'm guessing that it was. And speaking of GA planes, we have all these really cool GA planes here parked at an air base. Hmm. We do. What's going on? Must be an air show. Oh, that's really cool. Look, someone was in out here in their motorcycle doing donuts with yellow tires. That's awesome. So, where are we, and where are we going to park this thing? Well, I mean, I should follow the taxi lines, right? Um, looks like that's refueling. I'm just going to park it somewhere. Ooh, there's an F-22. Maybe we should go hang out with our friend, the F-22. 
But is the F-22 our friend? You think an F-22 would be snobbish to an F-15? But like, ugh, it's you. Ugh. Really? What do you want? Don't park next to me. Not even in the same class as me. Ugh. As if. So, there you have it. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna do that, actually. I'm gonna go hang out with the F-22s. Go hang out with the cool kids. And I do like the F-22. I hope you caught my last... Uh, live stream on the F-22. It's a great plane. It's just as much fun as the F-15, if not more, or less. Eh, whatever makes you happy. Let's go hang out with the cool kids. My mom always said, oh, if you want to get somewhere in life, it's who you know. So, you better get to know those F-22s there, Sonny. They could change your life. If you're running with the right crowd. Maybe. So let's go do that. Should we? Well, you know, well, they're not really lonely, I guess. I mean, they both have friends on each side. Well, I guess we're going to have to pick one. Yeah, well, we're just an F-15. We're kind of old, so... I guess we could kind of get away with this, just taxing however we want to parking. And make our own parking space. Probably not make our own parking space. Oh, but not hit anybody. Um, and I'm going to say... Oh, that is kind of snobbish, huh? It's like there was a parking space here, but they took it away just for the F-22. Fine, you know what? I will go park next to the Piper. Maybe I can go... You know, lord my superiority over the Piper. I can go Mach 2 Plus. How about you? Oh man, it's the F-15 again. I was worried about the F-22s and here comes the Strike Eagle. Making fun of me. Oh no. Marge's not gonna be happy. She's gonna be like, Hey Piper, why didn't you assert your dominance over that F-15? Don't let those fighter jets bully you. Exactly. So, here we are. That's awesome. I'm happy. Are you happy? If not, find a way to be happy. Look at that. Derpy style plus. Well, come send the tug to come fix my crappy parking on Mountain F-22. Alright. So, thank y'all for watching Derp Your Hoods. No. No, off. Don't turn yourself on. Let's see. Um, chalks on. No chalks? Why are chalks? Chalks not on. Because you didn't turn the pit off. Off. No? What's wrong with you? You left the cabin temp on. <sighs> you should not be touching airplanes. Mm. I think someone's already seen to that. Uh, do, 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 do. Isn't there like a master power switch somewhere? Alright, because I, I really want to 
Uh, no, we want the brake hold on. Uh, oxygen doesn't matter. I turn the generators off. Turn the emergency generator off. I turn the engine control off. I turn the master switch off. I turn the external power off. Right? I turned it off. So why am I still seeing lights everywhere? I can turn the mirrors back on. Um, somewhere I'm missing a power switch. Right? And it would be here. Ground power switch on. Auto off. Does that do it? No, that doesn't do it either. Well, fiddle dee dee. Turn off external power. I don't want the lights on. Man, I don't have time to mess with this. Okay. I'm gonna do the legendary control shift E. Right, how about, um, I forget what power is, shift P or something. Well, there you have it. F-15, Strike Eagle, um, lights are still on, nobody's home. Landing lights are off, and the crew's still there. So, thanks for watching Derp Your Hoods, if you guys ever want to fly with me, more than welcome to. Hopefully I'll post my live streams a little bit more in advance. Um, it's always going to be a West USA server, that won't change. Um, well, I mean, you know probably won't change so if you like any of my videos you can also hit like and subscribe if you're on that platform or like I said feel free to join me and hey everybody be safe and I look forward to seeing you guys in the skies